Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today, Shelby Chung, City Councilor for Thunder Bay. Welcome back. Thanks. So we got a little bit of uh, your history and kind of what's brought you up to, you know, the current time. So now you decided to run for City Council a year, year and a half ago, or I'm not sure when you decided. Mm -hmm. Why did you make that choice? Uh, Working for myself, um, I mean, it has its pros and cons. Uh, one of the cons is that um, I didn't have, at the time I decided to run for council, I didn't have any employees. Um, I didn't really have that camaraderie, and I kind of missed that. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you start talking to other business owners, you start um, thinking of you know situations where how do you lobby together, and I started looking at city council. Who can I lobby on city council? And one thing I noticed on that council was that we had a gap. There were a few women on council, it lacked representation for younger people, and it also lacked representation for the business class. And those are things that I feel strongly about, and I thought that, you know what, this is a, a good time. I'm always that person where somebody should do something, and usually that person's me. Um, and I, I saw an opportunity. Um, so when I, I started thinking about it again, weighed the pros and cons, and uh, early of 2014, that's when I decided that I was going to um, uh, run and put myself out there. Um, I thought for sure I'd get the, um, so I of course followed textbooks and I listened to the other counselors and figured out what works and what, do, what doesn't work. Um, and everybody kind of had a different take on what worked and didn't work um, and I followed in terms of the campaigning piece you mean yeah campaigning piece and it turns out I followed some really good advice and um, yeah here I am so what was that advice uh, I can actually tell you one piece was uh, a dinner I went to uh, I used to sit on the shift board of directors and uh, every two years and that's the young uh, professionals yes in Thunder Bay uh, I was at a dinner and uh, I uh, um, it was their Nova Awards for top 40 under, top 20 under 40. And uh, so I went representing Shift, and uh, I see at uh, the place setting that A Folds was gonna be sitting at my table. I'm like, oh, Amanda Folds, Amanda Bay. And I'm like, oh good, we're gonna talk fashion and whatever. So I sit down and this gentleman sits down and it's Andrew Folds. And uh, so we, we had a brief conversation and he told me he's like, the way to win is to knock on every door three times. I'm like, oh, easy, easy enough. A lot of work, but it's easy. <laughs> Just knock on the door. And um, in hindsight, I can't tell if he was trying to kill me or. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of doors once it's you get out there. a lot of doors. Uh, so that's what I was aiming for. So I had my map. I figured out how long it would take me to get, you know, five or six houses. Did the math on it, trying to figure out the, the plan. And uh, sure enough, I, I hit every door at least once and some doors twice. And that took me 10 months to do. Uh, wore out a lot of shoes. Um, but it's those little conversations like that and those little pieces of advice that where people don't think I'm listening, I am listening. And uh, I mean, that was good advice and yeah, I got on. So you've been successful in the campaign. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to accomplish on city council? Uh, you know, that, that's a very good question. Um, when I was door knocking, I heard some things that um, there, there are perceived and unperceived ideas of what our community needs. And one thing that I heard over and over again was that they didn't know what was going on. They weren't connected anymore. And part of it is a generation gap. Uh, part of it is a, like a technology gap. Uh, the use of social media is absolutely huge. Um, but because of the composition of council, they weren't utilizing it a lot. So to get that steady stream of information out there from a counselor so that people always had their counsel top of mind, I thought that there was a gap there. So what I hope to accomplish in the, in the next, in my, over my term, is to really give the people of Northwood a sense of what is going on so they feel like they're in the know, so that they can say, I heard of this or I kind of understand that, um, rather than um, just not knowing because not everybody reads the Chronicle Journal or TV News Watch or listens to council. So I find it was a very few people that have this information and then of course misinformation gets out. So I'd rather be, um, have a system and a framework for allowing people to access me 
um, which is why I heavily rely on social media. So I rely on Facebook. Uh, I often get um, uh, feedback using Reddit, which is another social media platform. And this is all free stuff that mm -hmm. anybody can tap into. So that's what I hope this next four years will bring. And of course, lowering taxes, lowering crime, um, which are the, the staple diet of any political rhetoric. Um, but I think we're, we're more than just cutting taxes in Thunder Bay. We're more than our potholes and we're more than our crime rate and statistics. Uh, we have this strong sense of community, but it's connecting those people and really making sure that people feel plugged into what's going on. So there's a lot going on though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just listening to the little bits you hear from city council, there's all kinds of things. So do you see your role as, as trying to share all those things with people or do you, are you somehow selective in terms of what maybe the folks in Northwood are most interested in or how do you, how, how do you filter through that and say this is what's important and this is what I want to share? It's keeping that steady stream open with constituents and mind you I, I've only have one year of experience um, but constituents they, they do approach me a lot and they say this is what's important. Um, I'll give you an example the Friends of the Conservatory um, Here's a group of volunteers, very dedicated, hardworking group, and they, they want to see the conservatory open and be the best that it can be. So how do I take that piece and find out things on council and really bring that message back? Um, right now we're, we're applying for Canada 150 funding, hopefully getting a new dome for the conservatory. Uh, we are getting a door counter installed December 2nd, and that's something that I've lobbied uh, administration for uh, to get. So this is... These are all little things that mean something to a group of people. Now, are there other groups of people that I can equally connect with? Um, there's the soccer, soccer groups in, uh, in Northwood, that whole chapels area. I meet with them every now and then and I'm still trying to figure out the business plan and f funding and um, all the things that come along with that. So, um, and then there's, there's other projects too, like so many people want Victoriaville Mall closed down. Um, and just bulldoze. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that piece plays out. Does it save money and can we use that money to reinvest into our community? So, you know, lots of times as a city councillor, you have to weigh one thing against another. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all cost money. And if you want to reduce taxes, you got less money. Right. And, and so, so how do, you, how do you make those decisions around what are the things that are most important um, that need the support of, of city council and the ones that maybe don't gets kind of... I'm a firm believer that it's not just the dualistic idea of cut, spend. I think there's always that third option of what is best and can we do more with less? And can we do better with less? Uh, one of the things with the conservatory right now that I'm kind of looking into, I'm going to be heading to Toronto this weekend for uh, personal reasons, um, but I cold called one of the councillors down there and I said, hey, I want to come and take a tour of your conservatory and I want to see what you guys are doing, what have you done with the space? Because their space is our sister space. So back in 1967, uh, this greenhouse company, I can't, the name escapes me right now, built three of the exact same greenhouse. There's one in Chicago, one in Thunder Bay, and one in Etobicoke. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna pick his brain. How did they, how did they get funding? How is the public involved? Uh, one of the things I was speaking with our administration about is the possibility of um, how is it, uh, creating plants um, that are natural to Thunder Bay. Yes. So when you're doing your green spaces um, that we don't have to buy plants from southern Ontario uh, that aren't acclimatized here and can can we make a business case for it to sell to other municipalities a business case that doesn't infringe on other businesses and that's something that we can really excel in and lower our taxes but do more with less well we need to hang on to that thought and take a short break we'll be right back please stay with us